Are we expecting uh, Stephen or Ben? I know Ben doesn't come on Thursdays anymore, but I think we should be expecting oh, yeah, Stephen. Steven. No, he just said he can't make the first half. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can go ahead and start. Let me pull up the doc. Make sure you sign in. I'll do that. Uh, do we have any new faces? Anyone who hasn't been to the meeting before or would like to introduce themselves? Oh, it doesn't look like it. Um, all right, that's it. Call it a meeting. <laughs> uh, Josh, do you want to talk about your uh, schema proposal? Yep, I can. That'd be great. Uh, let me get it up here. So this is a uh, 103, is that right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so yeah, I, just kind of a, a bit of background. I put this together because uh, we kind of did on the Heroku side, we're kind of extending the project descriptor to include more platform specific functionality, uh, mostly by kind of like landing it in keys that we're not using. Um, when we developed that, we ended up making a uh, JSON schema for the like merged version and thought it might be useful uh, for just the general project descriptor. Um, some, of the, some of the nice bits that come out of this is you get um, slightly, I guess right now it's kind of like uh, we have a bunch of rules about what a project descriptor is and um, they're all hard coded, meaning like, you know, we, we have to like explicitly write tests and explicitly like make sure that like um, the include and exclude are both specified or, um, you know, there's probably a host of other rules that I know aren't validated. Like for instance, build.m has a key and value, but you don't have to provide either and um, we'll accept that. Um, so there's a lot of like, just you think about how a TOML could evolve over time and how it's really up to us to like manually validate those. Um, so this kind of solves that problem because you kind of have like a generic way to describe how it should look and uh, you get errors if it doesn't match. So you get things like formats. Um, I guess just kind of a, I kind of jumped into the details there, but um, this is kind of like what the schema might look like. You basically, you know, we de describe what it needs. Um, you know, what's mandatory, what's not. We can require a name and value for like build in um, that kind of thing. Uh, it ends up yielding more of a, you get slightly better errors that like, you know, previously we would get an error like this. It says, uh, you know, very Golang specific error message and it's not super clear what it's about. You, you get a slightly better error message. This isn't, you know, this is kind of like a approximation of what it might look like. Kind of one of the thoughts we had is it be useful for Project Toml since customers and users are gonna be crafting this, but it kind of seems like we have a proliferation of Toml files appearing, and this might work as a good extension point for like defining how the other Toml files should be defined. Um, this one's probably closest to users, so maybe a good place to start, but something we could expand on. Yeah, you might right. mention this in here, but it, it's also worth pointing out that we're doing this in JavaScript and not in Go. So it's that's part of the value of having it externalized from something like Pack. Yep. I really like this idea. Um, I was wondering if we wanted to put for all specified files, which Project Toml is one of them, like schemas and then also Go bindings in the spec itself. Like this is what the OCI spec does in a way that's convenient. And I feel like we could follow that pattern 
And then if pack had other files that wanted schemas for, those could live in pack or somewhere else. Um, but I think having this for specified files in the spec would be a cool thing. You mentioned Go bindings. Could you elaborate on what you mean by that? So in the OCI spec, in addition to having JSON schemas, they have Go structs that describe all the things that they have schemas for. So you can use them. Um, you can consume it as a library if you want. So I haven't yeah. looked at those, but that kind of occurred to me that um, there are libraries where you can generate Go structs or um, I was thinking of looking at TypeScript um, types um, where you could generate them from the schema because the schema is like just well formed enough that you could do that. So I guess is it generated or is it just part of the? I mean, they commit the structs themselves to the project, but I think they okay. also have uh, tools in there to generate the structs from the schema. Yeah, I'd be more hesitant to the Go bindings option because it seems very opinionated to Go, where, you know, in some in this case, it seems like they're using JavaScript, right? And why pick Go over JavaScript or any other language for that matter? That's where it seems a little iffy. And especially if we could have something like the schema itself being declared and having a different tool that generates those structs for any given language. Yep. I don't see the value in the Go structs. I don't know. I feel like the places we consume it in the project are all in Go. And just because we provide Go structs doesn't mean we people can't use the schema in other languages, right? I th thought you said in the spec. And if it's in the spec, I don't know exactly how we would consume it. Uh, I think you can still <clears throat> import them. Like there's a Go mod, I believe, in the OCI spec. Let me check whether that's true or not. Yeah, we could start putting like a package JSON in there and even create yep. like a little NPM, like from the spec. Uh, let's, yeah, it's let's add really interesting. Cargo.toml while we're in there and <laughs> support every language. <laughs> I mean, we could always just start with the schemas and leave yep. the Go part out if it's controversial. But yeah, the other th good that's thing kind of about my vote. Yeah. Go the ahead. other good thing about putting it in the spec that I didn't think about is you just naturally get the versioning of it. You know, if we make changes to the spec, you don't have to like go into some other repo and make sure you have all the tags right and stuff. Um, and I know there are tools that exist that can generate uh, documentation. So if we want to like add like, you know, because this this is a bit hard to read, you can actually like generate like a, you know, like a markdown document out of out of this that's human readable if we feel like we need that. That's also Which, why I like the Go structs. When I go check OCI things, I read the Go structs because I find them readable, but maybe not everyone agrees that that is the best UX. Emily doesn't read books. She just reads Go code. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Any other questions or thoughts? Um, so I guess this, go ahead. sorry, I guess I just wanted to kind of summarize everything that we've said so far. So this RFC is to propose a schema for project descriptor, but it sounds like we want to overall, like, I guess, increase its scope to just add it to any schema or any Tamil file in the spec itself. Is that right? Yeah, I think that's what I heard. Yeah, I mean, definitely the, the value for us is from Project Tomo. Um, but I don't know. I could definitely see wanting the other stuff spec'd out, especially as like uh, more people start uh, calling Lifecycle directly. Or uh, it'd be nice to have one for Builder Tomo too. So. Yeah. Project metadata Tomo is another one yeah, that different yeah. platforms are going to want to write to give to the life cycle. And as we're kind of like already generating some aspects of our documentation on the buildpacks.io site, I could very easily see the schemas being a way to produce, you know, that auto generated documentation for the different configuration or descriptor files. 
Um, yep. So because you can annotate inside the uh, JSON schema, so you could actually like you know, have human readable bits in there that hopefully get translated to a you know, markdown. Uh, so because Project Toml is already an extension, I think we can start with Project Toml really easily and just add it to that same tag on the, the spec part of it. Um, so it'd be a good place, like that's a good way to just dip a toe into the water and if it looks, if it works, we can expand it to the other Toml files. It's worth noting that this fights against uh, the idea that the key name in Project Toml can be derived from the file name. I don't think you can make a schema that describes that, but I feel a little iffy about that suggestion anyway, so I'm okay with that, but I thought I'd call it out because it's in a different RFC. Mm. The key name, I guess I'm not aware of that one. The key name being a wildcard. Yeah, I like how for us it's function and for Project Toml it's project. Is there a way to do that in JSON schema? Just have like a, I mean, I like, like describe the schema of the sub section. Like, I guess you, I guess you could just like scope the schema to what's inside of that table. Yes, like you could do like a wild card, but to make it valid based on the proposal in the RFC Terrence opened, it would actually have to match the file name, which starts getting weird. That's sort of why I don't want the file name to affect the schema at all. I think it it's awkward. You're muted, Joe. I, th I think we can have that discussion as part of the uh, that RFC and not this RFC because I think yeah. Cool. Thanks for sharing that, Josh. Did Josh well, leave? <laughs> hi, Josh. Oh, he did. Uh, he's done. Yeah. <laughs> Mic drop. Everyone likes it. I'm out. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, actually, the timing of that was funny. Um, yeah, I, uh, I guess since there's nothing else on the agenda, I made some updates to the app mixins based on our discussion yesterday. Um, and I'm feeling like it's pretty, pretty darn close. Uh, I want some of like the key names and the schema I'm not super happy with, but the actual structure of it is what I want. So take a look when you get a chance. So I am curious um, in relation to this, Yesterday, you mentioned that you were already kind of like prototyping some of this uh, to make it work and see how well it all ties together. I'm curious how that ties into some of the other efforts that I know I'll be probably focusing on next week, which is the CA cert stuff. And I know we kind of um, created a, a little bit of a, a plan, a game plan to tackle that was to enable the volumes, the rewrite volumes, which is easily attainable that RFC just went through, uh, and then start actually implementing some of this ahead of time. So uh, yeah, I'm curious like what that entails. Uh, is that something, yeah, you are you- do, You should keep doing that. Are you gonna continue to work on this stuff or should I work on it in I'm not parallel? gonna work on, I'm not gonna work on the CA cert anything. But you are working on the stack build pack part, which I will be kind of re-implementing to try to get the CA cert stuff to work. Uh, I don't know how you're going to do it, but um, I think like our, like if we end up with a CA cert stack build pack, um, it would probably leverage my, like my hunch is that it would leverage the same volume mechanism to, uh, to bring in the certs, right? It's just sort of a different mechanism. Like I guess my question, Javier, is if you're going with the, if you're mounting into Etsy SSL certs, that seems sort of orthogonal to the root build pack thing, right? Uh, it isn't. So um, I don't know if you saw a reply to your comment where the read write volume works as a, as a workaround, right? As a hack, I think you declared it a hack. Um, so that, I don't think that's the problem. 
right? It's kind of the next step, the evolution of that is if we wanted to actually provide a stack build pack that when you placed a search file somewhere, right? Uh, that then it detects that and executes the update CA certs automatically so that you don't have to provide the entire contents. You could just provide additional certs that get added to the store. Uh, that part, I feel like that's where the stack build pack comes in. And mm -hmm. from my mind, there's some changes that you probably already did, Joe, to lifecycle to execute the stack build packs. And I don't want to have to recreate it if that's uh, something you've already done. So first of all, it's very early. Like we, you know, I, we were just proving out the the Canico stuff, right? Uh, there's still... Um, I'll probably, Jesse's probably going to pick it up where I left off and uh, I know he's out next week. So the timeline, like I do not want to attach the timeline uh, for the, for what you're doing with CA certs to stack packs right now. Okay. Um, I think that would be um, just a disservice to the community, right? So as long as you're okay with us reworking that later on, potentially right. like, and maybe we don't, maybe we just say, yeah, whatever the thing packs doing, it's fine. Other platforms can use stack packs for this, for this capability. Um, so, like, let's like I guess what I'm saying is, let's just work on these two things independently, as though they aren't connected. Even though we have a feeling that we will use stack packs down the road as a as a general mechanism for certs. Does that sound okay? It does with the like the idea of saying like, hey, we might stomp on each other's toes and we're both okay with that and we'll figure out how to essentially merge that piece of work. The part where maybe I'm a little confused and might be what Emily was trying to get at was like my step from here would be to use uh, stack build packs. There is no pack only implementation that I can see outside of the read write volume mounts. Uh, oh, so you're, so you're like saying you're no actually interim. blocked on something. So Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Why don't we just leave the the volume pack until we get the stack build packs, right? Well, I mean, we have it already, right? Like that would be implementing the read rate volumes. There is no, unless I'm misunderstanding what you're saying with that phrase. I'm saying to do the real version of it, we need stack build packs. So mm -hmm. it's not, we can't do it until there are stack build packs. Right. And I guess my effort was, or my idea was to put effort behind that to solve for the CA certs, like actual implementation effort. Like into the, the stack build packs, the life cycle running stack build packs altogether. Yeah. If I think like, let's see, that's too bad that Jesse's out next week. Cause I didn't want to just go do it without him, but we could, like the branch is up there, like you could pull it down and, you know, pretty soon start to play with it and try to build something on it, like an actual CA cert stack build pack. But uh, I, I worry that that's gonna just delay some other hack that we could get out for people to use. I guess that's the part, like, I'm not sure I, I see that other hack. Um... Yeah, anyway. I, I'm, I, yeah, I'm, I'm just making an assumption that, that there it's could be another hack. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, is there like how much can you do in pack before you would need the like the a proper mechanism from lifecycle? Like, could we converge at uh, in a week or something like that. Yeah, I was gonna say like I don't know that it has to be next week, right? That I I start working on it. I could definitely wait longer. Um, the the only rush I have is just the importance of the CA certs, but nothing specific that says there's a deadline, right? Yeah. So I just posted in the chat, and I'll add it to the document as well kind of like the exploration I did uh, and the quote unquote solutions that we currently have or will have. So one of them is extending the builders. That's what we currently have. The use of volume mounts is what we will have when we have rewrite volume mounts that could be placed anywhere. Um, 
and like I said, the only like I can't find a solution between the volume mounts and the stack build packs, right? Be without it being tied to a very specific operating system in a, like a really really hacky way. I don't know if you saw my comment about this in Slack, but what this example on the gist is doing is mounting from like a search directory in your working directory. But I think if you actually mounted Etsy certs to Etsy certs, it would mount the ones from the Docker VM, which I checked and actually contain the ones from your system, system search store. So in a way, people wouldn't have to do really any work at all. Um, they wouldn't have to create a set of certs and put them together. You could just mount in your system ones from Docker. I definitely did not see that. That was three days ago. So you're saying that there are certs elsewhere. It's in the, the Docker VM has a cert store and I, check the documentation, it claims that it populates it using your system search store. So if you install a new cert on your workstation and then you restart Docker, your new cert's in the, in the Docker VM. And then if you mount, if you said dash dash volume Etsy certs or Etsy SSL certs, colon Etsy SSL certs, then because that's not in one of Docker's allowed share paths, it will actually mount the directory from the VM not from your host system. So you can kind of just make it magically work with all the things that are on your host. Okay, I could definitely explore that. I was not aware of that as a possibility. And that, I that guess that could be the interim. Yeah, sorry. I think that's actually pretty good. Like it gets you through all your yeah. build problems and you can even do it at runtime because it's not specific to us at all. We're just documenting a feature of Docker, but I think as long as people are using pack and Docker locally, this should solve their problems. I mean, I think there's a use case for you want to bake CA certs into the final image so that you can portably run it across different platforms where you're not, you know, you can't. Yes, you don't have it doesn't a host solve that problem. Yeah. Um, but, but to solve the build time problem, then like for pack specifically, strongly agree. I think it solves a big category of problems at least. And then that makes me feel okay waiting for the real stack pack RFC spec PR lifecycle parade to progress before we get the complete solution. Yeah, and so this solves for build time, right? It, uh, the- This solves for runtime and Docker. You can do the same thing at runtime, but it well, doesn't solve for portable runtime solution. Okay, that, that's, that's basically what I was really yeah. looking for, right? The only way that we can solve portable runtime would be, uh, I mean, if we even wanted that, I think really is a uh, stack build packs. Yeah, but a lot of people will then run these images if they're thinking about running them other places we need the search, they're running them in Kates and there's a pattern of using init containers to install search there anyways. So right. I'm not saying that nobody wants to bake them in. Some people definitely do, but I think there's a lot of people who, for whom this would be sufficient. I think the big gap is CI. You would need to uh, install your certs in CI as well. Yeah, the CIs that already use PAC and Docker, that'll work. I was gonna yeah. say, if you're already using <laughs> PAC, maybe you can just uh, create a volume and do that. Or you need a solution in CI to install your search anyway. It's like if you're running this build without pack, you would still need still need your search in CI. Well, I'll definitely take a look at this. Um, and yeah, hopefully another solution comes out of it in the interim uh, for before stack build packs. And then we're not stepping on each other's toes. So are we done early? Uh, I, I added something to the end of the uh, list when I joined. Just I updated the RFC around profile D to use a totally separate directory uh, and um, kind of 
better define the formats for the output and edit a prior art section on, on Joe's request. Um, I just main thing I wanted to ask is, uh, you know, Joe, you brought up last time, you know, is this a pattern somewhere? I don't know. When I thought back, I didn't remember if we actually addressed that or if we <laughs> changed subjects somehow. Um, do you uh, do, do you still feel like uh, it needs more think, investigation into the? Sorry. No, I think I approved it with the exec D thing. Cool. Um, uh, the, I'm good. Awesome. The format is just the env list, and there there are some things like uh, Windows use that strategy um, for adding to the environment. So I just ah. wanted to make sure I'm comfortable with it. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. I, yeah. Looks good after you made those changes. Awesome. That's all I got. It seems like that tranche of new RFCs you added, Stephen, most of them are ready to move to FCP. Uh, uh, given Terrence is out this week, I'm, I'm happy to wait a little, you know, until he has a, yeah. a chance to look at them at least. If, if you mm -hmm. know, that'd be a, a I'm kind of looking at you, Joe. Yeah, I'll, uh, yeah, let's do, let's wait till Monday if that's fine. I'll just grab them on Monday and I can go over them all with him. I think it'll be pretty straightforward. So as long as you can wait two business days. <laughs> ha happy to. want to make sure he has a chance to provide feedback. Um, I think they're small, hopefully, and not, not super controversial things, but I uh, definitely don't want to move too quickly. All right. Thanks. Bye.